there's a, a very important tribal elder in Kandahar named Haji Burgat Khan, who was uh, one of the leaders of the Ishaq Said tribe, which is a tribe of hundreds of thousands of people that spans Kandahar, Helmand, and, and various other provinces. And uh, Burgat Khan was very instrumental in convincing, in the first days after the Taliban had fallen, convincing his fellow tribes people, as well as, ex, uh, or as, well as Taliban's foot soldiers, to, to support the new order, to support the Americans, and to support the Karzai government. Uh, he was very instrumental in getting a lot of Taliban rank and file commanders to turn over their weapons. And in fact, if you go back and look at the press reports, there's a lot of well-publicized incidents in which um, Taliban commanders handed over their weapons to the Afghan government and to the Americans. Um, and so he was very important in that. He wielded a lot of influence. I would say he's probably one of the most important people in, in Kandahar province. Nonetheless, uh, in May 2002, uh, in the middle of the night, US forces raided his compound and his village. Uh, they killed him. And in the course of the, the operation, they arrested 55 other males in the village. They took, the mail, they took all these 55 to Kandahar Airfield, uh, which is the, was the main military hub in southern Afghanistan. And uh, there's a lot of evidence. Um, they claim that the Americans had tortured them, stripped them naked, et cetera. And there's also a lot of evidence um, that corroborates that. And so they did all this, and then they released them, because they found that there was nothing, they had nothing on them. They were just everybody in the village. And so, But the reason this happened is because the US military forces were fed false intelligence. Uh, and the reason they were fed false intelligence is because they had allied with uh, certain warlords and commanders who wanted to see Haji Burgat Khan's influence diminished because they wanted to sort of establish themselves in that area. Right? And that combined with the logic that, you know, the logic of the war on terror in 2002 in which anybody who somebody says is a Taliban is a Taliban um, led to these sorts of circumstances. Um, and the incident is infamous today. And you know, if you go to Kandahar, and I only learned this in researching this chapter, you know, I would go to Kandahar and ask people, like, why is there a Taliban here? I mean, I went to one particular cluster of villages in Maiwan district, which is completely controlled by the Taliban. And um, you know, in, in this village, there are no adults anymore. Uh, the women have all fled to Pakistan. The men either have joined the Taliban or have been killed or uh, are off you know, doing drug smuggling. The children run the village. So it's like, a, you know, I thought it was like a Lord of the Flies the frontier version or something, you know? And, and I was really struck by how, how, could this, you know, how could this come to be? And so in researching this and asking people what was sort of the background of this is how I uncovered Haji Burgat Khan. And he was just the first example in this village. He's from that village. But after that, after that uh, raid, there was another raid shortly thereafter in which the Americans came and arrested 95 of Burgat Khan's police officers. So after the Taliban had fallen, Burgat Khan had established a police force to sort of fill the vacuum. You know? And he was elected in, in a tribal election to do, to do so. Right? So the Americans had come and arrested all 95 of these police officers. And the reason they did so was because another sort of world they were aligned with wanted their police officers in that region. Um, and so you know, today, the regions where Burgat Khan had influence is completely controlled by the Taliban. 